I'm so happy to be with you today. It's 1230. It's Thursday. So we're doing a Facebook Live. I'm thrilled. So um, this is the second one. And what we're going to be doing is a Facebook Live based on the ounce of prevention, insights to keep the pounds away. And we'll do that each Thursday at 1230. We'll do a little snippet, not take up too much of your time, but get into a little more depth um, rather than the short... Um, blog that will come to your inbox or you can have it come to your inbox or you can look at it on the website any of that sorts of th sort of thing so today we're talking about willpower um, and some how to's and and what to do about that kind of thing I am dr. Stephanie fine if I if you're a new friend here and I've been helping people lose weight keep it off most importantly for almost 20 years now it's 18 and counting and uh, I'm thrilled to be talking to you about willpower. So what prompted the um, uh, ounce of prevention this week was that I went to Costco. Now I hadn't been to Costco in so long. I used to go all the time and I just sort of fell out of the habit. And what was remarkable, for those of you who go to Costco all the time, this it'll it might sound funny, I was completely overwhelmed <laughs> by the sales and things like that. Like. It was the way they have got that dialed in. I mean, they know the triggers, they know everything. So it was a costing me from all sides. I actually um, ended up texting my husband because I was so uh, aware of how um, bombarded I was. It was it was really interesting. I had to go there to get some food. And so that was all the way in the back, which, you know, they actually do that on purpose that you have to go all the way back to get the things, you know, that are, that people get frequently so that you have to pass through all that. And I was able to do it, but not without a lot of uh, prompting on my part, which is what got me to talk about that in the blog. So the, the real reason besides that I was so shocked with all that is that when I got home, I was hungry. Now, I actually wasn't hungry because <laughs> I had had lunch right before. But what I knew to be true, because I'm doing this a long time, is that I needed comfort. I, I, this, I, as I'm saying it, I'm thinking, you know, people must think it's, it sounds a little nuts that a, co that a Costco trip can become an, something that's overwhelming to the point that I needed, I felt like I needed comfort. Now, I didn't consciously think I needed comfort. That's the trick, right? Um, I just felt hungry, which I, I wasn't. But my pattern has been in the past in particular, and now I'm very aware of it, that if I need comfort, uh, I usually eat some. E eating something is the quickest way to that. Now, having done this a while, there are some other things that I like to do now to comfort myself. But the first one is to recognize that that's what's going on. Now, it was a little easier for me because I knew I had eaten lunch and my lunch lasts me longer than an hour. So I knew that it couldn't be that. And so then it prompted me to think, well, what, what is going on? And it was the uh, Costco overwhelm. <laughs> so, so the interesting thing to me about that is that so what some people don't know is that willpower is a finite resource. We only wake up with so much of it and a lot of things deplete it, a lot. There are physical things like being hungry, being tired, uh, that sort of thing, cold, hot, you know, any of those sorts of things where you're, you're not um, comfortable, that can make your willpower decrease. Um, emails, people asking you things, both in emails and in person, Kids are something that can deplete the willpower, just their their nature. I mean, not even intending to be causing trouble, just, you know, their, their constant bag of needs, depending on how old they are. Um, well, they always are needy, but you know what I mean? <laughs> like if they're very small, that really can take a lot out of you. So knowing that means that we have to come up with strategies on how to, um, how to support the willpower depletion and also be aware that it happens. Because if you have a, um, oh, you know what I wanted to do? I'm gonna refresh, sorry, I'm looking on my website to see if I can see that it's come up so that I know that this actually worked, <laughs> which would be nice. So 
being aware of this depletion means that you can then um, shore up yourself to get the things you want done in the day. One of them may be eating better. One of them may be completing tasks. One of them may be getting someplace on time. They, it might be having a meeting that you are um, interested in really being present for. At any of these things, the willpower depletion will work to um, make it harder, you know? And so knowing that it's there. Now, one of the things that ends up being really important is how you get the willpower. Like how, how is it that you, um, what gives you the most will the most at the at the beginning of the day okay so that is all the things you imagine that it to be <laughs> so that's getting a good night's sleep getting good nutrition um being healthy you know physically like a headache or any pain will certainly i mean that is the quickest now that i'm that pain zaps you so making sure that you're not, that you are literally physically comfortable as you can be. Even with that, you will have depletion through the day. So if you've noticed that the afternoon is, can be challenging, it's, it's the willpower depletion. So how do you replete? How do you, how do you shore up your willpower? There actually are a couple ways that, were, that have been studied to show that they really work. So, eating is actually one of them. Now, again, eating nutritious food at the right time. So, eat, it's not eating itself, it's making sure you have a, sort of an even glucose level. You know, so it's not that we're gonna pop a, a thing of candy and now you're gonna have willpower. It, 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 that would lead to the crash, which would really deplete it. So what, what will work best is, you know, nutritious eating through the day even emptying so that means you know pro a good combo of protein carbs good fats you know um that's water that sort of thing so good nutrition will help ironically that also will help if your plan is to lose weight right which is one of the things we're talking about here is losing weight and keeping up and so eating well helps your willpower but also uh the willpower helps you continue your good eating you see it's that circle so making sure you're not hungry. When you are hungry, you know perfectly well you have not great willpower. And so that's when, if you're over hungry, I talk about this a lot, if you're over hungry, you're likely to make bad decisions just to get the food into you. And that's a depleted willpower. Um, so also sleep. So a nap would help. I mean, if, you're, if you happen to be in a situation where you could do that, <laughs> it would make a difference. Um, but things like prayer, meditation, those things center you, right? You, you have to sort of be in the moment and reconnect to what you want. So to me, it's not a surprise that those things, gratitude lists also, so prayer, meditation, gratitude list, that you could see that that's a similar um, feel of those things. And they literally will give you more willpower afterwards. And you can see that. You can see that you'd be more focused knowing what you want to do and what decisions you want to make. Another one is social connection. So when I was having my Costco moment, I, I, the first thing I did, and this was unconscious, I mean in terms of I wasn't trying to shore up my willpower consciously, um, was to contact my husband and explain, like think, oh my goodness, look at all these crazy things. I really, I couldn't not contact him. It was very, like I said, overwhelming. So social connections are also something that really help. Um, and it can energize you again. So that could be asking for help, but it could also just be connecting and having a nice time. Like if you're on the computer all day and you need a break and you have decisions to make, connecting with a friend, um, a meaningful connection will, will really make a big difference. So those are just a, a few of them. You may find your own that get your willpower up, but knowing that this is an issue, the willpower depletion is really the first step and that and I wrote that in the um, ounce of prevention so being aware planning for it and then the last one and it always is is being kind to yourself about the whole situation so sometimes we'll plan on our best laid plans or you know for not but the attempt was important and probably made a difference even if it didn't end up making the difference that you wanted 
So I am a huge proponent of planning. Planning is uh, looking forward, making arrangements so that you have what you need, and then going forward, being uh, flexible enough to, to be in the moment and do what you need to do, uh, even if the plan isn't perfect. But you increase the odds of success, whatever you're defining that to be, if you have given yourself all the support that you could need. It's really super important, that stuff. The other concept, two other concepts. One is this idea of a karate chop. So I, I am not a karate expert or novice. I'm nothing with karate. But what I have heard is, you know, when people can chop the like cinder block or, or a piece of solid wood, you know, they, they uh, train to, to be able to do that. And one of the ways they are able to do that is when they're visualizing, you know, chopping the wood, let's say, they visualize the point past the wood. So the floor, so that the, the side of the hand is going through the wood to the floor. If you stop at the wood, the, it, the um, energy won't go through it. You have to go completely through. I find that to be such a useful analogy because when we're planning for things, we need to plan through them, not at the, not just at the event. And this is particularly true here in this idea of the willpower depletion because like let's say you go to a wedding um, and it's you, you've decided the food isn't the best, you're really there to support the groom and your friends and to ha connect and have a really good time and you're on a weight loss journey and you're looking to lose a couple pounds and you've decided that this is not the place that you're going to expend a lot of calories. Um, and you manage, you, so you plan. So you have a little snack before, and you're there, and you really focus on the people and connecting. You have a fantastic time. It's it's relatively easy to not be um, tempted by the chicken, you know, dinner. And then you get home, and you eat all the crackers and cookies you can find. That piece is that piece that I experienced having gone to Costco, managed through Costco, but then felt that comfort need. So the karate chop means plan for the after. Okay, knowing that this is a possibility. That could mean a couple of things. Not having cookies and crackers in the house is one of them. I love environmental control. But another one is knowing that it's possible and having a plan to be comforted afterwards. So connecting with a partner, um, talking to a friend, uh, going for a walk, um, having a bath when you get home, something like that, but intentionally planning that will make a hu huge difference. The, the, the energy is calmed, the willpower is um, shored up, and you are able to stick to the goals that you set for yourself, the reasonable goals that you set for yourself. So that that is an important one. The other one I wanted to talk about, this is the last one, it's really interesting, because there'll be a bunch of people who are saying, I go to Costco all the time, it's no problem, which is awesome. And what usually happens there is that you do go all the time. So you start to filter out all those messages, and you're able to go in there and not be tempted by every little thing that's in there. Now they'll change the store around <laughs> to, to fight that for people, but in general, you your brain works to filter those things out. Your brain needs to streamline as much as possible. And if you go someplace all the time, it will habituate you to, you know, you'll go down this aisle and you'll get this thing on the right and on the left. You know, I mean, it really, it's like a market. You know, you're not tempted by the things. You basically go and you're able to get your list. So that is your brain habituating and a filter. So some of you, Costco is not an issue for you at all. No problem. Go in, go out, done. But um, a buffet may be difficult. Or, um, you know, for some, like, for some people it'll be a yarn store. Or so, you know, like, there'll just be something that there's so much temptation. So uh, I wanted to introduce a couple of those brain con concepts. And the idea that um, the willpower can be depleted, You're, you wake up with a certain amount, the idea that your brain can habituate, habitu habituate to 
uh, environments, were, so then they're not as overwhelming. Like if I started going to Costco every week, I, I wouldn't have had an experience. I, I, soon I wouldn't have that experience. And the karate chop. So the idea of planning for beyond the event that you are concerned about. So knowing that you might need comfort, you might need willpower, um, you know, recharge after the event. So those are just a couple things. I'm so happy to spend this time with you on Thursday and I will see you next Thursday. And I hope you have a really, really good week.